Today, I'll be looking at how to use Excel to control and update the color of polygons. Firstly, I'd like to thank Volker Mueller, Senior Product Manager for Generative Components, for some great tips that made this process a lot more efficient. If you ever have a question or looking for more information, make sure you head over to the Bentley Community's Generative Components Forum. First of all, I thought I'd show you the basic system I use for testing out this workflow. So to start off, we just have a base CS, open up the functions tab and I've just selected and dragged in the series function. What this actually does is it actually gives you a shortcut to creating a function call with the series function already uh, populated. So that's how I actually started it and if I actually turn on my next uh, transaction you can see I've created two of these one called column spacing and one called row spacing. And within each of those obviously the series is function it has a start value of zero and on this one it's an end value of 15,000 the one thing it doesn't pop up with is just the increment. So I just turn that on and you can see for the increment for this, I've actually used 1500. So it's gonna be 1500 spacing. And for the row spacing, again, I'll turn on the increment and I have a function series, start at zero, end at 30,000 and increments of 3000. So just some typical sort of panels. So I'll just delete the function script there. So then all I need to do is just drop in a point node and link that to the row spacing and the column spacing. So the one thing you see straight away is we're not replicated properly, we're just getting a diagonal line. So just right click and say switch replication style and we get all possible combinations. So from there, it's just a quick add in a uh, polygon node and link that to point one and have the polygon via uh, point grid and we get a series of polygons. So here you can see the polygons are arrayed with polygon zero zero and the bottom left corner and then you can see it increments across as polygon sort of three zero three one and that's not exactly how I like to actually run my polygons I like to have my rows first and then columns so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a uh, transpose so you go poly point one dot transpose and then open and close brackets and what that provides it's just a change in the order of the polygon so now I have polygon zero one two three being the rows and the second character being the actual columns so with that all set up, the next part of our task is to drag in the Excel node. So I've just linked that to a simple Excel uh, workbook and it's just called uh, Facade Color. And so what I've actually done is created this just with 10 rows and 10 columns to sort of mimic the same setup I've got in Generative Components. The way this is controlled is through some of the conditional formatting within Excel. So if we open up conditional formatting, click manage rules, you'll see I've got four colors and they're related to value. So value one gives me blue, value two gives me green, three red and four yellow. So by changing the numbers, obviously you change this to a four, it instantly goes yellow. So it's just a bit of visual feedback. So how I'm gonna use this is the numbers in Excel are gonna to relate to color numbers within our color table. So color one being number one in our color table. So looking at the color table, color one is blue, two is green, three is red, and four is yellow. So I've just made the conditional formatting in Excel match the colors of my color table. So in generative components, the sheet is sheet one, and the address is B2 to K11. So if we look back at Excel, we can see it's B2 to K11. So it's important to have this linked to the same number of polygons you have in your generative components model. So the one difference in the way that I've set up my generative components and the way that Excel set up is that I'm actually reading my generative components polygons from bottom left to top right, and Excel is reading the opposite direction. So what I've done is actually dragged in an expression node to try and reverse this list. So basically then Excel will match the way that I want it to read in generative components. So if we look at that expression, so we start the expression with two int, and then open brackets, the Excel range we're going to use, which is Excel range one dot value dot reverse and open and close brackets for the reverse and then close brackets to end the expression. And what they did was reverse the entire reading of the Excel. And you can, here you can see that value three is at the top and value three is at the bottom in Excel. So that's perfect. That's exactly how we want it to come into generative components. 
So now all we need to do is link the expression node into our polygon. So to do that, we're actually going to click on the drop down within the polygon node and scroll down and expand the general section and scroll down to color and pin that. Then we're just going to link the expression to that color. And you can see straight away, we get the colors from Excel straight into generative components. So if we go back to Excel and we just simply change the numbers here, say to number three across the top, and you see we get visual feedback due to the conditional formatting. If we hit save, come back into our generative components model and hit update model. It takes literally half a second and we've got updated uh, polygon colors. So the question is how you, you would actually utilize this. This opens up a wide range of possibilities, I think. I like to use different polygon colors to determine what type of facade panel is assigned to that polygon. Or you could use it for different methods like paving types or even ceiling systems. So to give you an example, I've loaded up four basic generated node types, just of basic facade panels. And you can see if I load up that, those transactions, it loads up four different panels and they get applied to different colors. So one question is how is this done? And I think it's called an uh, inline uh, an expression, but it's actually an expression that just says, from polygon, and we just nominate that as, as polygon P, in the polygon one, which is our polygon array, dot flatten, so we're just looking at a flattened list at the moment, where P dot color, so the polygon we're looking at, its color equals color, in this, in this instance, color equals blue equals 255. So we're actually looking at the RGB values for each of those polygons. And so if we look at that, demo type one is assigned to blue, Demo type two is green, so two, G equals 255. Demo type three, it's assigned to red 255. And demo type eight was assigned to red 255 and green 255, which gives us our yellow value. And here you can see you've got four different panel types. So we go back into Excel and we just do a quick update to show you how that works. So I'll just make a couple of changes. And hit save, and then come back into our generative components model and just hit refresh. And what you can see is it goes through each of those panel types and assigns them to the correct colors that we actually just set in Excel. And it takes a few seconds and we've got an updated facade. I think this saves a lot of work of trying to select polygons and adjust their colors using scripts or even manually going through and changing the colors of polygons. But I also think this approach could be used for a variety of tasks. Changing color is, is just one, but you could be changing text, changing parameters. The limits are really your imagination. Hopefully you find some way to use it in your next project. And I've linked below the file so you can try it out for yourself. So until next time, thanks for watching.